Hello. I'm Julie Graylow, and I'm here to tell you about an idea. An idea for improving cancer control in the developing world. And that idea involves a partnership. A partnership between two cancer centers, one in the United States and one in Uganda. Let's dispel a few myths first. The first myth is that cancer is a disease of rich countries. False. The fact is that cancer is now a leading cause of death and disability in developing countries. In 1970, 15% of cancers diagnosed in the world were in the developing world. In 2008, it reached 56%. By 2030, we anticipate that a full 70% of cancers will be diagnosed in developing nations. Already at the present, two-thirds of death due to cancer in the world are occurring in the developing countries. Another myth. It's too expensive and there are too many obstacles to prevent or treat cancer in developing countries. False. The fact is that much can be done to prevent, treat, and palliate cancer even in resource-constrained settings. And let me give you one idea of a way in which to do this. I'm going to talk about a successful strategy for improving cancer care in Uganda that actually evolved from a pre-existing partnership in infectious disease. This is a relationship between the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, Washington, and the Uganda Cancer Institute in Kampala, Uganda. The status of the relationship started years ago with infectious disease as the basis. In this country of 27 million people, at that point, the highest health priorities involved HIV, drug-resistant tuberculosis, and malaria. And so the Fred Hutchinson Center set up a relationship and research programs and training in infectious disease. And what was seen was that there were many cancers that were associated with infectious disease. Kaposi's sarcoma, for example, and Burkitt lymphoma. And you might wonder how someone like me, a breast cancer specialist, got involved in this program. Well, what we found was that the new data shows that women's cancers are actually the highest cancers now, even in Uganda. This is 2008 data from Globocan that shows that cervical cancer and breast cancer are the two most common cancers in Uganda. So this program on infectious disease-related cancer melded into a program on cancer in general, and breast cancer experts like me got involved. What existed at the time of our initiation of partnership was there were two oncology specialists throughout all of Uganda and there was one cancer treatment facility. So a program was developed that was threefold. It involved clinical care, training, and research. Within clinical care, we provided medical support and help them develop clinical protocols, treatment protocols. Within training, we are still involved in educating clinicians and staff to enhance human capacity. And in research, we're doing studies jointly with the Ugandans to understand the causes of cancer in this country and to test more effective prevention and treatment. We've been building human capacity jointly since 2004. We have a bi-directional oncology training program. We have a tailored program for Ugandan cancer specialists at our cancer center in Seattle. It's mostly medical oncologists, but we've had pharmacists and other specialists come for up to a year as well. 
And then in the other direction, we have internships and volunteer opportunities for U.S. physicians in Uganda. This has proven to be quite popular. We have many residents, fellows, medical students, and even undergraduates who are vying for positions to study in Uganda. Since 2004, we've trained 53 Americans and Ugandans. We've increased the physician capacity in Uganda five-fold in cancer treatment. We have a new National Institutes of Health grant to support an additional 100 trainees over the next four years, and we have multiple ongoing research trials. This slide shows our team working jointly with Ugandans and Americans in Kampala with Noleb, one of our current fellows in Seattle right now, and um, also we have a team working jointly in Kampala. The group has initiated a variety of community programs because awareness and education, not just of the medical staff, but of the community, was felt to be important. This shows one of the Ugandan oncologists, as well as breast cancer patients and advocates, doing a training program. You see a van at the bottom, but that's not a mobile mammography unit. The country of Uganda can't invest in a program for massive screening with mammography, but this van attracts attention, and it has room to do exams and to provide um, materials and awareness as it travels throughout the country. We've partnered with breast cancer patients and advocates and found that to be a very valuable tool. Here are a few members of the Ugandan Women's Cancer Support Organization. They've proven to be a powerful force. And every time I've visited the Ugandan Cancer Institute, I've seen Margaret or uh, Speciosa or Gertrude in the facility talking to newly diagnosed women's cancer patients about what's available and providing psychosocial support. This is what we don't want to see. We don't want to see the woman in the middle who presented at a very late stage of diagnosis. You can even see the cancer in her skin above her clothing with her two daughters. She knew she had a breast mass for several years. It wasn't causing any problems. Why should she seek help? It wasn't until the mass became painful that she said, okay, now it's time for me to get help. She did not know that an earlier presentation, an earlier detection of her cancer would give her a better cure rate. Finally, her daughters brought her into the clinic. We have a very exciting new venture in building a new cancer center in Kampala. And the groundbreaking will be this fall. It will be a state-of-the-art facility, including a clinic, laboratories, training facilities, research facilities. It's the first collaborative cancer center between US and Africa that is comprehensive. And the partners in funding and in the whole effort include the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, the Ugandan government, and the US Agency for International Development, a strong partnership with equal commitment. In 2010 and 2011, cancer, in part due to these efforts and this partnership, was included in the Uganda national health policy for the first time. Here are some lessons learned. Build cancer care on existing programs and services. We started with a strong program in infectious disease. We partnered with reproductive health and maternal and child health and the primary care community. We found that community health promoters were invaluable at overcoming the stigma, at creating awareness, and at showing the community that you can survive cancer. We have a very innovative bi-directional training program that is as popular for the Americans as it is for the Ugandans. We found that data and research were necessary to understand what we were doing and how new interventions would pr improve prevention and treatment and palliation. And we found that a mutually beneficial partnership that benefits all sides of the equation is what's going to endure. The time has come to challenge and disprove the assumption that cancer cannot be prevented or treated or palliated in developing countries. 
And I've shown you here an idea of a partnership for cancer care, training, and research that can be a model for other nations. Thank you very much.